Hello, welcome to my channel. Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg. I'm coming to you today from my sunroom, facing the, the treed ravine in my backyard. It is a gorgeous spring afternoon, and I decided it was just a very good place to record this tag video. I was tagged way back on February 6th of 2024 by the creator of this tag, Will Chambers, and it is the classical music tag. You do not have to be really familiar with classical music to understand this tag or do this tag. I didn't do this tag originally because um, even though it doesn't have a lot of prompts, I was stumped on one of the prompts and couldn't think of a good answer. So I just sort of ignored it. And then I saw Pat Book Chat with Pat did a version of this tag. And all of a sudden, that missing answer just struck me. And yes, I'm really rather late because, as I said, I was, a tag, I was tagged by the creator way back in February. So here we go. There are four prompts. Each one is based on a piece of classical music. Um, you don't really have to, like I said, you don't have to understand classical music to understand the meaning of the tag. I am going to include a playlist in the description featuring a video of all the music. It won't necessarily be the best version of this pieces of music that you can find on YouTube, but it should be acceptable. Prompt number one, Pierre Ghent, suite number one, opus 46, morning mood. What type of book, be it fiction, nonfiction, prose, or poetry, could you or do you read first thing in the morning? Alternatively, if you are not a morning reader, what book do you think has a great morning scene? I am kind of a morning reader. The first thing I do when I get up in the morning is uh, feed my cats and clean their litter boxes. But then I go for a walk. I find walks incredibly refreshing and invigorating and just a good way to start my day. And that's related to books because I am always listening to an audiobook when I go for my walk. And um, I think that's one of the reasons I really also enjoy my walks, is it's just not for getting out, is that um, I get to indulge in my audiobook with not a whole lot of other stuff going on. You can walk in this neighborhood, I can walk in different paths, and um, just listen to my audiobook without too many disturbances from other people. I rarely actually pick up a book or my Kindle and read in the morning. It's pretty much devoted to audiobooks. I'm also having a tough time of thinking of a morning scene in a book. Prompt number two, Die Valkyrie, WWV 86B, Act 3, Ride of the Valkyries. A book you enjoyed where the protagonist dies or an important death funeral takes place. I'm going to talk about a book with an important funeral. That is Albert Camus' The Stranger. It was originally published in French in 1942. In this book, the, the narrator Marceau gets notified that his mother has died and he has to go out to the country. He lives in Algeria. Um, he lives in the city, um, the main city in Algeria. The name is escaping me. But he goes out to the country where his mother has died in the, the old folks' home. And they have a funeral. And it is just a blistering, hot day. You feel the sun beating down you like an oppression. They're all dressed in their funeral finest clothes. And it's dark and it's absorbing the heat. And the narrator buries his mother. But more importantly, 
he does not cry for his mother. Because although he said he had an acceptable relationship with his mother, it was not the kind of relationship where the son needed to cry for his dead mother. And that has really drastic downstream effects because this was Algeria in the 40s. And what sort of hideous, nefarious monster would not cry at his mother's funeral? Prompt number three. Canon and Gouge in D major, P37-1, Canon. Which book did you enjoy which has a wedding that you wish you could attend? I don't really pay a lot of attention to weddings and books. Um, I know lots of characters get married, but, but wedding scenes just, just don't float my boat. And there's probably not a wedding that I can think of that I would like to attend. However, maybe I can do the wedding at Melly, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, because it is a great affair for this young man who um, has done, created life. He has created a creature. Frankenstein, the main character, thinks his creation is a monster. The monster does not think himself as a monster. And the astute reader is going to understand that the creature is not the monster of the book. It is Victor Frankenstein that is the monster of the book. Well, anyway, Victor Frankenstein marries the lovely Elizabeth and they have a wonderful wedding until the creature visits Elizabeth on her wedding night. And um, yeah, the, the, the wedding, I guess that would have been a nice wedding to attend. I would not want to have been there in the morning after the wedding night and what the creature does. Prompt number four, the planets, Opus 32, four, Jupiter, the bringer of jollity, a book or series which poignantly moves through phases. It can be a building's roman, work of history, fiction, etc. I'm going to take a single novel. It is Stoner by John Williams. It takes that main character, Stoner, as he's a, a young farm boy, just getting an education in Missouri. And this boy, he falls in love with literature. So much so that he abandons the, the idea of becoming a farmer and taking over the family farm. He wants to become a professor of literature. And he does become a professor of literature. And the book takes him all the way from that early beginning to the end of his life. And it is one of the saddest books that you could read, but not sad in a, in a, in a sentimental way. It's just, this is a man who led his life. And this is what happens to a man after his life is over. And I can honestly say that it, it, it is such a great novel. I've only read it once, and it is a book that I really need to read again pretty soon. And that is the end of the prompts. And now on to tagging a few people. I'm going to tag a very new booktuber that has just come to my attention. As of this recording, um, she had 55 subscribers. So she could use a few more. That is Nikki at My Messy Bookshelf. Now, you are not obligated to do this tag, of course. Um, if you're interested, go ahead and do it. If you get stumped, like me, you can skip it for a few months or forever. I'm also going to tag MJ because I think um, Nikki at My Messy Bookshelf would be a good category for MJ to highlight on some of her new booktuber videos. I'm also going to tag the mild rumpus. And that is the end. Thank you for watching and keep on reading.